spawning in the top left position as our red zerg player coming in for axiom trying to bring things back they're down uh three one right now only two games away from losing this match he's got to make something happen it is axioms mia and spawning in the bottom right position just some really good aggression and abusing the build of uh of alicia in that last game give it up for mvp's dream okay so tvz on this map i feel like well, we've seen a bit of a shift in terms of how players are going. If you guys actually just tuned in, some of you may be coming straight from Code S. Um, we see a lot of Terran players actually going for the third base in this upper position. And when you're pushing forward towards a Zerg opponent um, with Bio Widowmine, which we so often see in the current metagame, it's very, I guess it's becoming a bit more common for this third base to be placed there. I feel like Dream with the current SV positioning, it's going to be a barracks. Likely just going to get a gas now. Um, majority of players that open racks do go for Reaper, and with that rally point is going to be a fast gas for a Reaper. Now, looking at what Mia's doing, though. Probably it's going to be a 15 hatch. Nothing special. No crazy fast pool, early gas, any shenanigans like that. And I have to say, this map, it's a pretty, pretty narrow map with a, a reasonably long walking distance to the opponent's base. This is going to make... Uh, the Reaper play, not quite as effective. I actually like this. He actually had uh, only only two SCVs on that gas for a second there. But I feel like the follow-up for Dream in, in terms of a lot of Reaper play is you just get the Reaper for scouting. Tiny bit of early pressure. Basically, just get two Reapers, move into a reactor, get a factory, go three command centers, and just kind of take it like a regular um, bio widow mine game. We are going to have a pretty early gas here, though, from Mia. It doesn't look like it's going to be for any kind of extractor trick in this. But there that Reaper is coming. And actually, no no SCV scout for Dream. So he's not going to try to force any kind of fast bunker play um, or anything of that sort. Now, Overlord's moving in. And I like this. He's got a position. He's not going for the, the greedy scout of the expansion. Um, in case a marine does show up, but he wants to be able to see uh, anything that goes down this little pathway, but the reaper, <laughs> he's not going down the regular. He takes the road less traveled by jumping off of cliffs. And now we do have that gas being mined. So with the queens coming out, this could be just a bit of like the star tail lifestyle, um, possibly anticipating that dream would go for reapers. And I mean, not a, not a bad call to make at all. And getting the queens out will be able to help zone this reaper away. He kind of sees this spawning pool. It's like, oh, okay, I'll take a shot. And if you guys are curious, the positioning of the spawning pool just makes it a lot safer against drop play. That could hit the back of the main base where they just pick that off. Um, as we so often see it being placed in mineral lines, or at least next to the hatchery. But the Reaper, can they be able to do a bit of poking? Actually hasn't killed any Zerglings yet, so... He hasn't really, really gotten too much uh, for his money here. He's just kind of scouting with it. He's like, man, it's so fast, it can scout, but I want to kill stuff too. It does get a Zergling finally, but the Queen says back off. He's not going to be able to do too much more, but... We do have that command center follow-up as well as the factory and the reactor for Dream. He's banking up a little bit of minerals. He could get a third command center before he actually moves into um, any unit production. So it would be interesting to see that. And the Reaper is just poking away. And one of the other things that the Reaper's kind of job is is to prevent a third base from going up. So the longer Mia is stuck on two bases, the better for Dream. And especially with this third command center now starting up for our Terran player. Um, Reaper's juking in and out. He actually has managed to keep both of them alive so far. He's just poking away. He's being as annoying as possible, and he really wants to task um, the APM, the multitasking of Mia, draw him off of his guard, and, and, and claim an advantage through sheer harassment um, of the Queens. But now we have the tech lag coming in for the barracks. We should see a second gas come up pretty soon for Dream as well, followed up by double engineering bay. Um, so just kind of waiting on, uh, on his follow-up now, and... Really, with Zergling speed completing it for Mia, this Overlord that is about to complete, he's actually a tiny bit blocked. He can't really make Zerglings. He can't make too many more drones. He's just going to get a third hatchery. Continue to spread the creep. Not a bad idea at all. He actually has a relatively low amount of creep spread going. Um, not really shoving out too much. Stress wants to get his injects up, but... We do have Dream now moving out with a couple of Hellions and these Reapers. He now has the gas being taken. Stim is on the way. 
Um, no engineering base just yet, though. He's kind of focusing on this wall, getting a bunker up and a supply depot. Wants to be safe against any kind of counterattack. And not a, not a bad call at all. He's trying to move in, though, with these Hellions. He should be able to scout this third base coming. Uh, there's no Roach Warren, so it's actually just going to be Speedlings versus this. And this could work kind of well. The Reapers add in a little bit of extra punch that Zerg players don't typically expect. But these Zerglings actually catch him from behind. And he is going to be able to grab uh, a couple of these units. But the Hellions managed to barely slip out of there. Uh, like a grease-covered football setting up the ramp now. And he picked up quite a few number of Zerglings. He might be able to go and start to pressure this hatchery a bit. Which I'd almost like to see, but he's just going to sit here, take map control for now. Double evolution chamber coming in, and now the double engineering bay. Um, so Dream getting up some Widow Mines as well. Now has his three command center set up. And here he is. He's going to try to harass this third base. He's saying, hey, man, you're not bringing any drones down here just yet. I have a good number of Hellions. I have the Reapers with their regenerating health that I can harass you with as well. And he's going to try to bring the Zerglings in, possibly for a flank, realizing, hey, I don't actually have enough Zerglings to take this fight here. Not just yet. Um, but he's going to try to catch these Widow Mines. Oh, my goodness. He's trying to burrow just in time. No, he will not be able to burrow that one. But this one does. Oh, it was not able to, uh, to send off its payload. The Zerglings were clumped up quite a bit. But 1-1 one, one now coming in for our Axiom Zerg. And these these Hellions and uh, Reapers are just trying to just trying to keep base map control, um, preventing Mia from getting too much scouting information and really slowing down the creep spread. Mia hasn't been able to spread it a, a crazy amount, and he has been able to get this third base established though. He's not terribly far behind in that regard. But looking at a couple of other numbers, we have 45 SCVs to 52 drones. So the Zerglings that were built. Definitely helping Dream stay even in economy. If we look at the income tab, Dream is actually looking uh, pretty happy with himself thanks to those mules now on that natural expansion. He could try to move out and take a third base. And I feel like that's one of the, the advantages of this, but instead he's just trying to put on the pressure. And as long as he has the Hellions and Reapers, it's so easy to defend a third because if he moves out with too many units, he can dive in for drones. He can, of course, always just retreat with the Hellions to kill the Zerglings. And we only have a very late Baneling Nest. Um, at least comparatively to what could have come from Dream, but he's just picking off the creep tumors now, uh, as uh, as he can, and well, Lair is coming in as well. So this is going to time out pretty nicely for him to be able to get his two two. He will be able to start that once the one one is done, and still not moving out that third command center. He's getting the rest of his infrastructure set up, adding on these reactors, continue to put out a couple of widow mines, be able to use defensively, and I really like that he hasn't thrown the Hellions and Reapers away though. He's been able to secure so much board control with. With these, uh, with these Hellions and Reapers. He hasn't sent them back to be repaired, but the, the Reapers, at the very least, regenerate their health. Looking very solid. We have a couple of Banelings being produced by Mia now. Maybe trying to say, hey, finally just want to get rid of these such annoying units. Almost managed to grab a Hellion, but... Man, uh, the only reason Dream's going to lose anything is just uh, not really repairing. So he does have a couple of these weakened Hellions. About three of them are weak. We do have a Spire starting for Mia, and it looks like he wants to get ready to go into that standard ZVT meta that we do see rolling around so often and that's going to be that Ling Thane Muta actually getting the pneumaticized carapace to allow the overseers to follow these Hellions, uh, excuse me, to follow the Hellions I guess as well as the Mutalisks being able to take off mines and interestingly enough we see Dream is going to go for that uh, that higher up expansion above the main base so he can kind of press forward, it's a lot easier to defend this third base because your rally point kind of goes right by it so if you get harassed you're generally going to have units moving around that area or just at that area it's not bad call at all. He's getting up another factory to continue to put out this widow mine production. And this base is being uh, pooped creep on, but it's not terribly significant. The Marines and Hellions, though, moving forward. He's going with this stim timing um, and the combat shield as well. He's doing a lot of damage here, picking up a lot of creep tumors. Not too many banelings. He's going to get cornered here, though. The widow mine's hurting himself a bit more than his opponent. He loads up in the medevac at the last second. He will be able to get away. I <laughs> love uh, dropping the units onto the banelings, trying to bait them back into the widow mine range. So, Dream is just putting on a lot of pressure, but the first Mutalisks are about to come out. We do have 2-2 on the way for Mia. Dream has his 1-1. Does he even have an armory, though? Very important. He does, but no 2-2. Now, just barely starting. So, he is going to be about a minute behind on those upgrades. It's very difficult to exploit an upgrade timing that small, but the Mutalisks gets a good hit, taking out nine of those Zerglings. He's continuing to press forward. Just kind of... It's almost like Leapfrog, basically, with the Widow Mines. Just put one in front of the other so that you can consistently fall back time after time to keep everything alive. But uh, the Baneling speed is complete. Now, the question is, does he have enough Banelings to take care of this? It's, I mean, it's only five. The Widow Mines getting procced on the Queens, and then the Transfuse will buy him a little bit of time. 
but this aggression from MVP Dream, he's just consistently just shoving forward, trying to prevent his opponent from making any drones. And he's only saturated on three base. He has the fourth hatchery on the left side, but he can't really do anything with it at the moment. And now it looks like he's going to try to move in with these Zerglings. Banelings had a couple of good connections. The Mutalisks rolling in as well, but there's just too many Marines here. There's no more Banelings left, just one last one that was just produced. He has uh, a lot more in production, nine of them, but he might be able to put on a lot of pressure here. It could be kicking out the queen would actually be really, really nice. He's just going to evacuate the drones. A great widow mine shot, though. Takes out so many of them. He's killed a ton of drones right now, and Dream is pressing forward, but the Banelings are here. 16 drones dead, though. He can just pack up and go home right now and uh, just be nice and happy with himself. He's producing four mines at a time. And he can just kill this third base right now. There are so many active mines ready to unload on these Ling Bane forces. It is quite a scary proposition to deal with. And now, this is the beauty of, uh, of taking the base in this position. He has a bunker set up here. His rally is already moving out towards us. He can defend it quite easily. He's shutting down the third base of Mia. At the same time, Mia is going to move in to saturate the fourth base. Um, but that's basically going to become the new third. And this Ling Bane is going to run into the reinforcements. These mines are going to get picked off. He needs to make sure he doesn't uh, overextend himself. Um, with these units out here. His medevacs are far away from any bio forces. Um, he is moving around a drop trying to add an additional damage. He's getting the uh, swarm host upgrade. Very interesting that he wants to go for the swarm host play versus bio widow mine. It, the bio is just so mobile that with the scans you can pick off the swarm host pretty easily if you're not caught uh, in a contain basically. You know, it, All you have to do as the bio player versus swarm host, just catch the swarm host in the center of the map. Force him to kind of like uh, look at siege tanks basically. Burrow, fire the locust, unburrow, and then as a Terran player you have enough DPS to chew through the locust and prevent the, the swarm host from advancing. But Dream has a lot of medevacs right now. 10 moving up to 12. I'm um, just kind of trying to move out with these jobs to do a bit of damage and I love these widow mines kind of placed uh, so precariously throughout the map to block these bases as well, and he's moving forward with some Marines. The drop going at the same time. He may just try to come in and flank him with this medevac, but he will not. Um, and he does secure the fourth base in the bottom left. He has a sensor tower. Uh, he's just waiting for the creep to reside. And right now, this, uh, I guess it's now the fourth base, really, for Mia, is going to be under a lot of pressure. He's moving in with the Widow Mines. He does not have the Widow Mine Burrow upgrade, but he's been placing himself so strategically, he's not even worried. The Locust, though, coming in to pick these Marines off, he now realizes, okay, there's Swarm Host. I've killed off this hatchery, though. I could just get out of here. Uh, and he needs to be aware of the threat of the Swarm Host. He may try to do some sort of play where he kills the Wave of Locust, stems forward, and tries to catch them, but that would be ideal for Mia uh, to just try to go for a big counterattack. So... This will, Locust will be able to proc the Widow Mines, though, so not bad. And we do have a big Zergling counterattack headed towards that bottom left base. It has not actually been landed, but there is a Widow Mine here. And, oh, takes out a good chunk. Only five of those Zerglings, though. We do have another drop in the main base, picking off a couple of drones. Widow Mines as well, littering the field. There's actually Widow Mines in like pretty much all these bases now, except for this fourth. More Swarm Hosts are coming out. He has Banelings here, but the Bio able to take that out quite handily. And right about now, he's just having such a hard time moving these Swarm Hosts out. Sure, he can use them defensively, but he doesn't have enough Swarm Hosts to cover all of these bases at the same time. And Dream is just all over our Axiom Zerg right now, and we do have more Widow Mines being brought forward. And he has enough Widow Mines that he can actually afford to just uh, let them tank onto these, these Swarm Hosts. More Medivacs moving in. A really big drop. The Mutas are going to catch him, but there's nothing else here to deal with this. He's just going to drop right here, and the Mutas are going to get caught by this. The Marines chewing away quite handily at them. He's going to burrow these Widow Mines inside the main base of Mia at the same time putting on the forward pressure with the bio trying to pick off some of these swarm hosts. The bane laser are going to move in. The mines get off a couple of decent connections. Um, we'll be able to clean up all of the bio but the mines not taken care of just yet. Looks like that overseer actually died as well and Dream's going to move everything back. He just has so much everywhere. Uh, so many medevacs. He actually gets into this, uh, this third base Trying to pick off these units. The Zerglings are there to cover these. The mine cooldown is about to run out, and these Mutalisks are so close. He's keeping the Marines by them. He recognizes that he has a great opportunity to bait. These Mutalisks gets another kill right there. He might be able to pick off the spawning pool. He's going for it. It's very, very low. It's going to die at the same time. He's pushing towards that third base. The Banley's going to get some great connections, though, with this round. He has to load up and get out of there. The Locust uh, making themselves pretty damn cost-effective here, trying to shove this bio off of him. But he's actually managed to bring Dream's supply quite down to his own level. But the problem here is that it's only three bases for Mia. Um, bit of kiting going on with these Locusts. But four bases now for Dream. He has a ton of infrastructure set up in that main base. Uh, all these factories he has now to produce tons of Widow Mines. And this Medevac count is actually getting a bit a bit scary. He's going to move up to 13 pretty quickly. He's, he's not afraid to throw them away at this point because he just has so many. And there's still mines littering the map. Um, especially the side of... Uh, 
of Mia. And now he can just load up in this medevac and try to run away. But no. Ah, oh, that Widowman only grabs a couple of Zergling kills there. But Dream is just looking so sharp right now. Mia really needs to get some good solid fungals off. Um, now the Hive, though, just barely starting at 21 minutes. Ultralisks are so far away. Um, one of the, the cornerstones being able to take out the style that we saw actually really, really well employed by uh, MVP Sniper um, earlier on in this uh, this Team League match. But now he's going to move in. The Locusts are here, and that'll buy him a lot of time, especially if he can get some Fungal Growths off. Um, I'd be more looking forward to a, a Fungal Growth on the Medivacs, though. That would be huge. There's just so many of them. All that juicy energy. And he's going to send out another flanking drop towards the right side. He has the mines here, sieging this base. And really what he wants to do is just go wherever the Swarmhosts are. And he managed to pick two off for free right there. And, you know, there's just been no action on Dream's side of the map at all. He's just constantly kept this pressure on Mia. And Mia just having such a rough time dealing with this. He has a drop, though. Does get a nice fungal off here to catch that one. But uh, the drop is going to head towards the natural, picking off these queens and a good number of the drones. He's going to run up here. Forced to pick up here. He's going to try to drop possibly just on top of these swarm hosts, but no. Oh my. Ugh, that's a scary proposition right there. Now dropping on top of the swarm hosts, getting a lot of damage done. The natural expansion being hurt. The main base now being ravaged as well. And all the swarm hosts are going to die. Dream catching them all off of their cooldown. And this may be enough to break Mia's back. Ladies and gentlemen, there is just too much bio here. The fungal growths are going down, but they don't deal the bonus damage versus the marauders. And with this many medevacs to support them, it's just so much. He might actually give chase. He can rock right into a field of widow mines, which would be absolutely um, catastrophic, really, at this point for Mia. Plus two range attack coming in, as well as the plus three melee. And Ultralis Cavern is now coming in at the 23 minute mark. But what economy does he have to actually even make any ultralisk there's no bank for the zerg player he's not maxed out so he's not going to be accumulating any bank anytime soon adding on 26 zerglings he's trying to get a fourth base set up but i i seriously doubt dream is going to allow that to happen uh, he's kind of given up his hopes on killing off this base he's going to head back towards the right side burrowing these widow mines he does not have the fast barrel upgrade but the mines do get a good number of kills this one now 14 kills um, and he's going to move in and pressure this base. He has the mine support. He's bringing in a couple of marauders and marines to shut that down. And Mia, he's, he's stuck at like 100 supply. He just cannot get up uh, the economy that he needs to put out a large number of units. And these banelings, you know, these are gas units. He doesn't have too much more economy left. He's going to try to deny this hatchery again. He's just consistently trying to set this up. And now we have a drop in the main base. Dream putting on more pressure. He's bringing in units to flank these mutalisks of Mia. Sending... <laughs> It's almost all these are actually his marines. And now he's going to pick out the Ultralisk Cavern. So huge. He's only going to get three Ultralisks out. He won't be able to get Chitinous plating either. So he's going to severely lack those upgrades for the armor. And that's just going to allow the marines to just shred these Ultralisks. This base is going to get denied again. Dream now maxed. Continuing to just get upgrades. And now GG from Mia Dream. Just applied way too much pressure. That was such an intense game. Holy... Oh my goodness, that was just non-stop action from uh, from start to finish there from Dream. Uh, from the second he opened up with those Reapers, straight into the Reaper Hellion. He just kept putting on the pressure the entire time. And Mia had such a hard time getting the drones on the fourth base. And even then, just had to pull all the drones from the third. Couldn't even build them there. Had to forfeit that third base. And wow. At, at this point, with how well Dream played there, the score is now going to be 4-1. Um, favoring MVP and basically right now uh, Axiom can send out one any of its other players again um, since this is the last game for them if they lose so as their ace player they will choose to be sent out Ryong so we're going to get into a TVT pretty shortly guys um, stay tuned I am Nathanius this is the Acer Team Story Cup thank you guys for tuning in don't go anywhere <laughs>